standing in front of um, what we already talked about was the primary structures and his more uh, minimal early uh, 60s works. Um, a lot of this, as we had said, we do have actually a couple of the larger scatters from the um, 60s and we, that will be in the other show. We just didn't have room because they take up a lot of floor space. So, um, but we do have photographs, we do have a number of the drawings and uh, we're also then showing uh, his migration uh, into the early 70s with some of these you know, pieces. And, um, and one of these sort of uh, garden-like pieces um, were also included in the uh, 1973 um, uh, Whitney Biennial. So why don't we start down there, Isaac, and kind of talk about the the most earliest work from like this 1963 and, and beyond. Sure. So um, you know, we, we set up Ed's uh, work before. So this video, we want to focus mostly on his formless work that I think was, you know, really in the realm of the, the primary structures uh, exhibition at the Jewish Museum. And this is work from uh, 63, pretty much through the 60s. I think the last piece was probably finalized in the 70s, the one from the first Whitney well, Biennium. Well, actually this photograph here, yeah, these that's, were... That's later, yeah, that's, yeah, 80s, that's true. Yeah, 80s, early 80s. Um, uh, so, um, he, he pretty much started off with this type of work. This is from maybe 63 through 64. And these are gouache drawings on uh, like a thicker cardstock paper that he's gridded out. And um, David could talk a little bit about, you know, um, what we think that he's doing with reducing, but it, it's very, he called them volumetric. Um, no, arithmetic. These are the arithmetic these ones. Are the arithmetic. other ones are the volumetric yeah, ones. So mm -hmm. then he, they have two groups. Then these are the uh, more arith, the volumetric ones which he's creating kind of a primary form and then he's removing a section from it. And so we have here a lot of drawings that then kind of trace that and, and what he's working on. And you can see his thought process. And um, then we also have some that here are some of the folds and you start seeing that over here. And so what he was doing was he was working with metal or with other building materials and he was uh, scoring, cutting, and then folding. And then so he would start making these forms that we have kind of in some of these photographs that then would become parts of scattered pieces that were shown at Fishbach and, and other places. And then he started incorporating lattices. Um, this is one of the early lattice pieces that you see that um, this is a catalog from Holly Solomon. This piece is in the Philip Johnson collection. And then that same motif with these kind of um, almost floral, they started becoming floral-like. kind of even referred to them as, that particular piece is actually morning glories. Yeah. And so it's Bet's morning glories, which again, we think is sort of significant. But yeah, that's, uh, the forms do, they feel very floral. Um, uh, even though some of them aren't completely round, there are a number of them that are, but yeah. And he starts using this lattice form as a way of almost growing pieces on a lattice also in conversation or even pre preceding, you know, Frank Stella, where then he starts, you know, kind of making vertical structures instead of just putting them on the floor. Now he's working with the wall or, you know, in vertical space. And then he starts populating them or, or caging them. You start seeing them kind of coming out or growing out. And then related to these works, these other volumetric ones up here, um, you know, they, they look very monolithic and um, you know, very in line with what you would expect from those 60s pieces, but there's a subversion because they're, they're like almost overtly phallic, I would say, especially these two. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's, you know, and again, it was a little bit of a subversion of, you know, in terms of um, minimalism as well, in that it wasn't a cube, it wasn't a circle, it wasn't, you know, he always had to, fiddle with the form, you know, so that it one, in, in fact, it's, he always showed the profiles when he would show, he, when his drawing, sort of what this would look like then when you, you know, walked around it or when you were looking down on it. And so it sort of defied that sort of whole notion of gestalt and um, that, oh, I know what that is, even though I, I don't see all of it, you know. Um, it, you, you, with his work, you had to see all of it. And so again, it, it sort of kind of begs the question, is that by design? You know, I mean, was he, was this again sort of a metaphor for him and himself that, you know, 
I'm not just an artist, I, there's more to me, and you have to kind of look all the way around. So there's a lot of way to read his things, and you didn't read it that way in the beginning. But you know, we have the benefit now of sort of looking at all this stuff, um, and even if you were his friends or colleagues or even other artists and stayed in touch with him, you may not have picked up on these things because they seemed so visually different. And, uh, but yet, it's what Isaac and I were both struck by and continue to be. We can't look at anything without going, oh, wait a minute, that's just like that, and it's like that, and it's over here, you know? And so now we're looking at all the dresses, we're looking at everything and trying to see these motifs, and, and oddly, you do see a lot of them. Um, but it's interesting, because like here, he would do these series, and in this one here, you know, it's like he's playing with putting them together and looking at them in different ways, and there's a bunch of them on this cardstock. And, and there's two or three different forms. And these were realized as wall sculptures. Yeah. They popped off the wall. They appeared to be, we don't have, he didn't have good documentation of a lot of those in terms of individually with details. Not sure why, but, uh, but back in the day, not everybody was taking photographs like we are today. But anyway, they were about this sort of size, it mm -hmm. seemed like when we saw some hung on a brick wall and you can kind of look at the average size of a brick and figure it out. And they came out, you know, about like that. And they were mostly red, blue, yellow, and black. It, it seemed like there was sometimes there was a black one. There was another shape that was, well, this is kind of the shape. Mm -hmm. But the other thing too is um, because he also, even though these are very flat, he also liked this illusion. And the illusory aspects are something that we still need to sort of uh, detangle a little bit and deconstruct ourselves. But, but again, it, it seems like uh, he liked this illusion and part of it was happening you know, around the same time in op art. It was also contrast to the flatness of, of you know, op, of, of pop art, and and um, and it sort of played in with this realm of like a minimalism with the, the the sculpture and the shape and form. But they, even though they're very flatly done, a lot of his work is illusory. It always has this tremendous illusory depth, and part of that is uh, because he's a sculptor and he liked working, you know, where you could walk around an object and appreciate it. But um, it also seems like, you know, there's a little bit of an illusion when you think about him as a gay or transgender person, that sort of two worlds that people have their feet in. And, um, and that, I think, sort of defined a lot of what was happening with him and, and, and some of his reaction to that through the 70s and 80s. And that's why maybe we're over reading these or over interpreting these. But this is the, the Betts um, Morning Glories. And there it seems like it should be a trellis, but it looks like they're contained. And this one is very strange. And there are a couple like this where they really look like they're just in a crate and they're just kind of coming out and it's sort of like, what is that about, you know? And so, um, not really sure, but the, you can see why the interest in things like Morning Glory, and he loves vines, he loves ivy and things like that, that sort of vine and kind of defy being contained or barriered. Um, and so you can almost understand where he would move from, you know, uh, these open sort of structures that leaned against the wall and these things sort of laid on them or leaned against them as sort of support to uh, basically, um, here he felt sort of, you know, maybe boxed or contained in in these ones where they're completely uh, structured. But then the one that ended up in the Whitney and several others, these literally look like garden lattices and they really, really look like a trellis. And the one we were standing in before was even called Garden. And um, it was also more colorful than a lot of the other ones. But, um, but again, it's a structure that is fairly open and accessible. So, you know, no one's ever had the benefit of talking about, to him about this while he was alive. We're sort of surmising this, you know, posthumously. But, um, but again, it just sort of shows how he thought so much about everything and, and how so much of it fed off of his personal life. And I think that's what's sort of fascinating for something even being minimalist and reductive, he's imbuing it with so much content. For, for me, what's really important to see this work is you see where he started and you see how deliberate and extremely formal he was as an artist. And it, it, then that, that shapes how I view all and the detail. other objects, how I view his practice. And I had you know, never seen it pretty much any of this, you know. I had been friends with him for a long time and helped him out in his studio and all kinds of things. 
and didn't know, I, I, I kind of knew peripheral, but I hadn't really looked closely at the work. You know? Well, you said he never really dwelled on it. He you never, it was not, it times. wasn't accessible, it wasn't part of um, what he wanted to project. Not that it didn't exist, um, but he was working on what he was working on at that moment. You know? And that's like most artists, you're the same way yeah. as an artist. I mean, you know, yeah, those things were great in the past, but this is what I'm doing now because it's an evolution and we all like to think that as, as we're evolving, we're growing and, and our newer thoughts are better than our older thoughts, you know, or we hope they're getting better. But uh, so that, I guess in that part is not surprising. And I think a lot of artists, you know, things in storage in New York are always just hard. It's not like you can just go open up a room or, you know, a space, yeah. you gotta unpack 20 things to get to something. And yeah. I, I think that's a, a problem as, as a sculptor because he made these giant pieces and, mm -hmm. you know, just to pull them out and, and look at them is challenging, you know? Yeah, it's an ordeal. It's, it's not as easy as just pulling out a drawing or something. So I think there's a, a rhyme and a reason for it. But uh, we feel this is very important and we're, it's being presented in a very documentary sort of way. Uh, there are some sculptures, like we said, for the later sculptures, but there aren't any of these that we're aware of that exist. If we can access some for the sculpture show, we would love to, uh, to include them, so. That'll be coming up.